Welcome to Miami. Thank you very much. What have you been up to so far since you've been here and when did you get in? So I got in on Thursday night okay. um, and I went to see Above and Beyond play at the Mana Winwood, I think it's called. Yeah. yeah. How was that? That was really awesome. Um, I knew that they were playing Kawaga a bunch, but they happened to play it that night, and I was like, oh, wow, yeah. I forgot. Actually, that. I saw them in Toronto a few, like a month ago, and they did play Kawaga. Oh, sweet, sweet. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so what do you have planned for the rest of the week here in Miami? Um, well, I did my first show this morning at 11, which was, uh, I played from 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning. Because at where? Uh, 11. Okay. Uh, and it's it's a 24-hour club, so they do sets all day and night. And How busy was it at that hour? It was actually pretty was busy. It? Yeah, it was really weird, but... Uh, and it was really weird when people would leave, the door would open, and like daylight would flood in to a club. And, and it was just weird because it's so dark, you'd think it's like 2 in the morning. But it's like, oh, it's you know 9 in the morning. So <laughs> Just out of curiosity, like, where do you get the energy to play a set at 8.30 in the morning? Oh, well, I slept. I mean, okay. everyone was like trying to get me to go out last night. And I was like, yo, I got to get up at 8 or 7 and drive to do a set at 8. And then another show at 3, which was this one. Um, so I did this. And then I have the Injuna Beats pool party tomorrow. Okay. And have you been premiering any new music here so far? Yeah, I actually played uh, four new songs today, I think. You finished those four songs that you posted about on Instagram? I saw you posted the yeah, other day. Yeah, right? yeah, three of those were from... The, uh, one was like a, an older one, and three of them were the ones that I finished. I still had one that I didn't play today because it's a little more chill, and I wanted to keep it kind of more energetic. Uh, yeah, I played more than I expected today, so... And how's the reception been so far on those new songs? Um, it's been cool. Actually, um, what's awesome is I sent them to a few close DJ friends like la like right when I finished them this week, and... Uh, Blau played it last night, and okay. so did Dallas K. So I was just with them, and they played it. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like yeah. I sent them to that like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's so good. it's been awesome. Yeah. Okay, so your background is in you know you used to play guitar, you used to do a lot of classic rock. That's your background. How has that kind of helped you with EDM and making the transition to EDM? And has it helped you at all having that background? Um, initially it didn't. I kind of just turned my back to it, which was really weird. And not weird, but un understandable because I was getting into electronic music. I didn't think I would really bother with you know classic rock and stuff anymore um but what's funny is now like in my sets i play like the who and like earth wind and fire and random things just because like it's stuff that i liked when i was a kid and and it's fun to like bring it back somehow but uh i'm also just recording more guitar and bass and small vocal stuff in new songs just because it kind of makes things more fun when i'm writing music so and what made you want to go from you know classic rock to edm what made you want to do that transition it wasn't really anything particular. I think it was, well, I'm from Vermont, so there's not much electronic music there. And uh, I met a kid that was a, an exchange student from Venezuela. And he, like, just was a DJ. And, and that was just what, what it was the norm down in Venezuela, I guess. And um, he showed my friend and I, like, a bunch of mixes. And we were just like, holy crap, what is this? We'd never heard it. Cause, you know, because we'd never heard it. I mean, we, we've heard, like, some electronic music, but not, you know, it was a Pete Tong mix or a Carl Cox mix. And we were just like, whoa, this is really cool. Um, and yeah, I think it was just because it was so different and I'd never really heard anything like that. that that's probably why I started trying it out. You think you'll ever do more with like classical instruments, classic rock, or you're always going to be in EDM for the time being? No, I'm, I mean, I'm always trying different stuff. It just depends on what works at the right time. And like right now, I'm doing dance music. I don't know what I'll do in, in six months. I don't know what I'll do in a year. So I'm kind of just going with the flow. Yeah. See what happens. And one of the things that you did recently that I really loved was that live version of uh, Kuaga with all the instruments. Um, what made you decide to do that? And can we see that? Will we see that for any of your other songs? Will you do that for any of your other songs? Um, I mean, I, I actually just did it randomly one day. I was like, I kind of just want to try to do like a little. I was going to do like a Pierce Fulton remix, right. and uh, it ended up just turning into its own version. And um, yeah, it was totally random. And I think we're going to try to do it for every big single going forward. And You're going to do a live version for all, all the big singles? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Not every, I mean, if it was every song, it'd yeah. be so hard. Right. But uh, but the goal is so I can have a live show maybe in like a year. And it's, say I so do So something like, like Porter Robinson's live show, that's what you're going for? Or? Not really. I mean, his is more visual and like all-encompassing, but mine would be like very loop-based. So it'd be like a different show every time. And it'd be kind of like song, break, song, break. You know, not like right. continuous mix. Um, I, the best reference I have is Paul Kalkbrenner, if you've ever seen him live or heard him live. He kind of has this mixer and he runs Ableton and he can kind of control when the kick comes in, when it comes out, and I would do something kind of like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. so you talk a bit about, you know, being so young in this industry, you know, you're only, you're 20, 22, right? Okay, so, you know, you're that age. Uh, how often do you get to see your friends? How often do you get to go back home? Is it tough, you know, being on the road all the time, touring all the time? Um, is there anything you wish you could change or... Um, I don't think there's anything I, I wish I could change. I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked on life mo mo most of the time. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the the only bummer is that when I am home, it's always when all my friends have work. Okay. So, I like I'm I'm home maybe three to four days a week most of the time, oh, and awesome. then yeah, because I play usually like Thursday through Monday or th Thursday through Sunday, and I come home on Sunday or Monday. 
and uh, so I'll be home like three three days a week and it's usually like Monday Tuesday Wednesday and that's when all my friends work sorry um, and uh, yeah I mean it's it's tough but you just got to make an effort to like go out when you're actually home on a weekend or whatever but it really depends okay. So you play in New York a lot. You have residency at a lot of the New York clubs. I'm just wondering if you have a favorite, where your favorite place to play in New York is. I've been playing Webster a lot lately, and that's always yeah. fun. And it's fun because, like, I've played my own night at Bright Nights, but I've also supported. And right. whatever the show is, even if you're just some random guy, if you play good music, they usually like it. And that's yeah, really You have residency cool. at, like, Lavo, Marquee, yeah, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. So do you have a particular favorite out of those? Marquee is awesome. I, I mean, I really like every New York club is good. It's like Webster's good. New York, the New York team's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Like, Potch is really good. Uh, Terminal 5 is right. awesome. Everything's really good. Yeah. yeah. So what are you working on right now in terms of new music, and what are we going to hear from you? Like, when's the next single we're going to hear from you? When's it going to come out? Um, there's no, I mean, I, don't, I haven't signed anything. I've just been trying to finish. Because, like, after Quagga, I kind of have to, like, pick a pretty, I don't know, specific kind of song to go with. I can't just, like, put out a random song and expect it to do well. Do you I feel like, do, that, do, you, do you feel pressure that you have to pick something particular after Quagga? Like, not, not pressure. I just think the smart thing would be to be more mindful of what, what I'm putting out and when I put it out because like I could have just put out something really similar or something really different right after and it just wouldn't have caused any sort of effect towards so, my career. So do you think the huge success of Kuaga has kind of changed what you're making next? Do you feel? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's what people is, now know me for, which is Do you bizarre. feel restrictive because of that? Like, no. I mean, I'm not like making a bunch of songs that sound like it. All my stuff sounds different, but uh, it's just about how different and when that kind of variation on my music comes out. So like, of like the maybe six or something songs I have either done or almost done, it's like none of them are similar and none of them are like qual one of them's like sort of but like when I say similar, it's like it kind of just follows the same guidelines. It's like melodic progressive. It has a vocal sample kind of thing, and that's about it. So I have like one that kind of follows it, and then everything else is totally different. Um, but yeah, I'm, I think I'm just gonna like finish all of them and send them to labels and just be like, which ones do you want? Yeah, go for it. Cool. And is there anyone who you haven't collaborated with that you really want to? Um, probably like someone like Passion Pit or like the band yeah. Passion Pit. I'm mean, obviously a singer and um, like I know Maddie and just had that. Huge yeah, 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 that was it's awesome. So sweet, yeah. but. Uh, but something like that, like I wouldn't really want to collab with. I mean, I can collab with dance music people, but it's just so easy and so straightforward. I'd want to do like you want to go outside the genre. Yeah, and do some bands or like I don't know. Like, I, any, any classic rock people you would like on your dream list, like the Who, like. Yeah. Just dream I mean, list, well, like right? when when Skrillex did the Doors thing, that was right, so awesome. Yeah. Like that would I've loved that the Doors forever. Sick, yeah. um, no, but I, I would also like to work with more like um, kind of like funk and soul people, just because like. It'd be sick to get like a live horn section just from some six session players and I don't know, or like just good bass lines because I can play bass but I'm not like terribly good so um, just working with a good session bassist would be tight and stuff like that. Not so much like vocal features and whatnot. Yeah. But. And is there any festival in particular that you haven't played yet that you do want to play that's on your bucket list? Anyone in particular? Um, well, one, I think I am playing it, but I'm actually really stoked them because I've wanted to for a while. It's Paradiso. Okay. Griff, am I actually playing Paradiso? Am I actually playing Paradiso? Paradiso. Okay. Yeah. It's not announced. Oh, okay. It's not announced. Well, I'll just say that I'm, I, I, that's one I wanted to play. Okay. Yeah. Um, one festival that I've wanted to play for a while is Paradiso in uh, Washington because it's on the Gorge, which is like this crazy valley, like cliff thing, and it looks really cool. So, yeah. Yeah. and just before we wrap up, um, where do you find you have the bigger fan base in Europe or North America? Where do you get, you Definitely know, North more? America. North America. I think it's because I'm just an American kid, and yeah, most yeah. people know me for that. So, so how do you think you're going to grow your European fan base? Like, as an artist, what are the challenges in trying to grow your presence overseas? Um, I mean, I actually was I was talking to someone about this the other day. I think it might actually be working with European yeah, artists, like collaborating with them. Yeah, and like maybe it's a vocalist from from over there that's popular or whatever, and do a feature and try to blow the song up over there. But like for example, I had a, a song like Quagga was the most Shazam song in India right. because um, it was in a commercial. So like now I have a ton of Indian fans just out of nowhere. So yeah. like that kind of stuff helps or like. So is that something you're actively trying to do, trying to grow that European fan base? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a like, high priority, but it is something that I want to work on. I just think that America is in such a good place, I might as well take, take it while it's here and, and slowly grow Europe on the side, but I don't think it's something I need to like really stress about growing all the time. Yeah, but, and I'm, I'm sure like, as, as you grow in America, you'll just naturally, kind of, yeah, yeah, it yeah. trickles over, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for yeah, your time. Absolutely.